This is a disaster for the Conservative Party. It was an unnecessary accident, which, uh, frankly, has to be owned now by Number 10. Uh, and, and Rishi must go. I mean, this is the end for Rishi. It's outrageous. Big reshuffle is happening. Uh, former Deputy Tory Party Chairman Lee Anderson confirming he's defected to Reform UK. Reform UK has offered me the chance to speak out in Parliament on behalf of millions of people up and down the country who feel that they're not being listened to. Uh, let's speak now to David Campbell-Bannerman, who chairs the Tory pressure group, the Conservative Democratic Organisation, which has called for a change in direction from uh, Rishi Sunak. David, uh, your reaction to Lee Anderson's move to join Reform UK? Well, thank you, Matt. Well, it, it's a disaster of the Conservative Party, and I'm afraid it's number 10 and Rishi to blame. It's yet more mishandling of party affairs and government affairs um, it wasn't necessary to do this. I understand the whip was under pressure from the left of the party to crack down on him. It could have been handled a lot better. And this is the result. And now there's even talk of possibly nine other Conservative MPs that might defect in the, in the same direction. I mean, the point is, I want the Conservative Party to go right to, to sort itself out. We need a new leader. Sunak is finished. Come on, Conservative MPs, wake up to this because you know we are heading over a cliff and this is a symbol of it and it's about time you got up and sorted out put your letters in that's the message from today isn't the truth that lee anderson uh moving to reform if that bolsters reforms vote all that will do is take even more votes off the conservatives making a labor government more likely well yes that is the net effect i mean the thing about Lee Anderson, you know, I've got a lot of time for Lee. You know, he's, he is a real miner. He he was telling me about, you know, he, he was actually uh, down there and it's, it's sort of a couple of feet uh, off the ground uh, uh, digging out coal. Um, and he represents traditional labour values, I would say, you know, what I call decent labour, which is at the heart of the Red Wall that Boris attracted over and now is in real risk of being lost, um, uh, particularly to Labour. That's probably more likely, to be honest, than reform. Uh, for reform might win one or two, I don't know. But the reality is this is a disaster for the Conservative Party. It was an unnecessary accident which, uh, frankly, has to be owned now by Number 10, uh, and, and Rishi must go. I mean, this is the end for Rishi. It's outrageous. David, how many have been? You've been. We, we, you and I speak quite regularly on the show. You've been telling me for for months that it's over for Rishi Sunak. Well, it these things take a, take time, and I'm afraid it does involve MPs, Conservative MPs, coming to their senses, realizing look, this isn't going to work. It's not working. We're heading now for the local elections. We don't want to lose another thousand councillors, do we? I mean, honestly, it. It, I mean, the problem is that Tory MPs are not doing what is necessary, which I'm afraid is to ask Rishi Sunak to step aside. I don't think he'll fight it if there was a vote of no confidence. I don't think he's happy at doing what he, he's doing. He's not a natural politician, he, let alone prime minister. It's not personal to him. It's just he's not performing. And we need to have a contest. We could do it in a week. Uh, you, members can be consulted and they must be consulted. But that can be done in 48 hours electronically. They were going to do that last time. I heard that from a former party chairman. It was going to take 48 hours electronic ballot. And so this must happen now because this is a real wake up call. Uh, Lee Anderson going to reform with others potentially doing the same. I mean, it, it, it really is time for the Conservative Party to decide whether it wants to stay in existence or not. David Campbell Bannerman, always good to speak to you. Thanks so much for joining us on uh, Times Radio this morning. Well, let's speak to uh, one uh, another Conservative uh, MP now, Conservative MP for Totnes, Anthony Mangnall joins us. Morning, Anthony. Morning. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. Very good. Just to be just in the interest of transparency, uh, are you one of the nine Conservative MPs thinking about defecting to reform that David was talking <laughs> about? No, I'm not. Do you think there are nine others? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that, you know, Richard Tice is very good at inflating numbers and that may be the case in this instance as well. Are you surprised about Lee Anderson uh, joining before? 
Well, I'm disappointed because when we came in together, I we, we spent a great many hours talking about, you know, why members of parliament who cross the floor should hold by-elections if they join another political party. And he signed my bill to do that, uh, to stop that from happening. And now he doesn't seem to be honouring it. But it's a big loss because he is a fantastic communicator. He's a good local MP. He's done some great work in, in Westminster. But of course, it's it's disappointing to see him do this because he was sent to Westminster as a Conservative member of Parliament. Yeah, you make that point. That's why we wanted to speak to you. So you had this uh, backbench bill, Recall of MPs Change of Party Affiliation Bill, which would yep. uh, mean that if an MP voluntarily changed their party allegiance, it would uh, trigger the recall process, triggering a, a by-election. Lee Anderson uh, backed that when you put it forward, when he was a Conservative MP. Uh, do you think uh, he is a hypocrite or a coward now? Well, I, it is quite hypocritical. And also, you know, if Richard Tice is trying to compl- you know, trying to say that he's the heir to Nigel Farage, Nigel Farage always made sure that any MP who defected to UKIP had to have a by-election. Um, you know, if Richard Tice is that confident about his uh, is confident about his sort of his vote share, then he should be pushing for Lee to have a by-election. Um, and more broadly, David Campbell Bannerman say that this is just another example of how you know this should be a wake up call for the Conservative Party. He said it's over for Rishi Sunak. There needs to be a change of leader. What do you say? I mean, nothing that Rishi Sunak has done in what the best part of eighteen months has made any difference to his poll ratings. If anything, it's made it worse. Is it time for a ch- for a change of leader? It is incredibly difficult, the circumstances in which the Prime Minister is operating. But you look at what he's achieved in the time that he has been in post, whether it's power sharing in Northern Ireland resuming, whether it's bringing down the tax burden by 4% re- regarding the national insurance reduction, whether it's supporting Ukraine, whether it's keeping the Red Sea maritime access open. You know, he has done an extraordinary amount and had an extraordinary amount thrown at him. And I have to say, for someone to take on the role and do what he's doing when he could be doing any other job in the world, I think it's remarkable that we do have a Prime Minister who has decided to do those sort of thing so I am fully supportive of him and and I hope colleagues will be as well and I think the one thing that people want us to see want 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 to see from their politicians is for them to get on and do their job and stop fighting um and that you know less less from the politicians and more hard work from us wouldn't be a bad thing I think that would be enough to get anyone's poll ratings moving Anthony good to speak to you I'll let you get back on with uh, get on with uh, with your job Anthony Magnall Conservative MP for Totnes who uh, like I said introduced a, a bill uh, a backbench bill uh, that would force a by-election if an MP uh, defected to a different party. And uh, it was backed by Lee Anderson, although he has said this morning that he won't be triggering a by-election in his Ashfield constituency.